made our way over to the Dark Container Corp in Lodi, California, and I'm here with Michael Westerfield. Michael, thanks for having us out here, man. Thanks for coming. You bet. So this is where all the trays in this particular area are coming, right? That's exactly right. Now, what will you guys do with all these school lunch trays that we've recycled for you? Well, what's good about this, uh, when we get them from schools like uh, Lodi, um, they're, they come pretty clean. The kids have done such a great job cleaning them that we don't need to wash them. Now, when you say wash them, so there's another process that, that these can go through? If the school didn't do that good a job with cleaning the trays, then yeah, then we would have to wash them to get them clean. If we're getting dirty ones at this facility, we really need them to be clean. Mm -hmm. um, so we'll go and work with the school, work with the individual schools um, within the district to educate them on what's necessary. I, I love this because it's completely organic. I, I mean, it started at the school. <laughs> Absolutely. It's a grassroots effort, and this teacher took it upon herself to do it and enlisted the help of her kids, and they came up with this program that uh, most adults couldn't figure out. So, it's, you know, it's pretty neat. <laughs> now, for you, what do you guys do with it here? Well, our, our goal here is to get the air out of it. This is 95% air. That's why these cases are, are so light. Yeah. Um, they really don't weigh anything. So, um, unfortunately, when you go to ship it, if it's 95% air, you know, you're not going to get much on the truck. So what we do is we have equipment like this that's designed to get the air out of it. And so it produces solid logs. This is, those lunch trays, that's about the same amount as that whole case right there. What do you do with all this now, now that you got all the air out? Well, we try to keep it, you know, separated. So if we have colored stuff from maybe somebody had meat trays or egg cartons or something like that that they dropped off here, yeah. um, we'll process that separately and you wind up having a colored log like that. And this is for all the plain white. So if somebody delivers a, uh, uh, or gets a new TV or new stereo and it comes in that big bulky foam, mm -hmm. we'll take that, we'll mix it in with these school lunch trays or with foam cups or um, egg cartons, you know, basically anything that's all white. Yeah. Yeah. Mix it in here and run it through the machine and it comes out like that. So this is what happens when they deliver it to you in this format. This is, this is the ideal format because if it's like this, we don't have to wash it. We can just mix it in and, and process it and generate those logs and somebody can use it uh, as feedstock for their, their recycled uh, material. And what if they do, what if they're not bringing it to you like this? Well, we'll, do, we'll, we'll usually go out there and meet with them and try to educate them. Um, if it's at a facility where we have access to a washing system, we can go ahead and wash it. And you said we're going to be able to see that here. Yeah, we're going to be adding a new one of those in Southern California here very soon. So we have to go back down to SoCal? Yeah, we've got to go back. we got to go back. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, we'll check that out. But in the meantime, this is pretty, I, I love it. You said that you'll go and visit their school. Do you go and visit their school and say, hey, you just go to the, hey, have the kids tell you how to do this. Yeah, exactly. Don't let the adults run the program. Let the kids and everything will be just fine. Yeah. <laughs> this is what you'll end up with. That's right. <laughs> yeah, you get adults involved and, yeah, I don't know. We, we don't like to talk about that. No, no, no. We'll keep it positive for the yeah. adults, but we know that the kids, you know, rule the world, so. Here's your fun fact. Did you know that your school lunch trays could be made into rulers and clipboards? We've made our way back down here to Southern California in Corona. We're out here at Dark Corporation. Now, Michael, that was a fast trip, wasn't it? Was amazing. I, it's just like, bam, we're here. Here we are. Here we are. All right, so we saw how the trays are brought in when the students do it. Well, what's different is up in Northern California, the students were cleaning all the trays. In Southern California, because we have access to a wash dry facility, the schools don't need to take all those extra steps. And so there's a distributor that sells trays to the schools, and then they take them back, and they bring them to us so that we can process them in, in, for recycling. Now, you know that there are schools out there that are watching this that are going, what? <laughs> are you kidding me? Because I have I mean, just in the time we were up there to down here, I, I kind of told a few schools about what we're doing, and they're like, Where, who do we go, where do we go? How do people find out about this? Well, TV shows like yours, <laughs> you know. We haven't really said much about it, and uh -huh. you know, we're getting a lot of phone calls. It's the number one phone call we get is about foam lunch tray recycling. And um, after this show airs, <laughs> I think we're going to be getting a lot more phone calls. Uh-oh, uh-oh. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Well, that's cool. So all they have to do is contact you to find out how they can have their school picked up or all the trays picked up at their school in, right? Yeah, well, it depends on, on what part of the country and if there's access to a facility. Okay. Um, that's what's nice about this is, you know, Dart has a footprint here, we have a wash and dry facility here, and we have a distributor um, that sells the trays that wants to bring them back, you know, and offer wow. the service. So so there's a lot of things coming together. Okay, all right. So I guess, let's put this wash and dry facility, let's, let's hear what this is all about. So these trays, I'm looking at them, they actually look pretty clean, a lot like the ones up in Northern California. Yeah, you know, when you bang them on the trash can, most of the stuff will come off. 
These trays are being fed into the grinder right over here. So they're immediately going to be ground up. You haven't done anything to them at this point. No, no. We're going to grind them up into smaller pieces. Um, that way they come un unnested. Um, it's just fluff, and then it goes into the uh, washing unit. And this is where they go from, you know, dirty trays to clean fluff. So they get ground up, they come in here. We can well, actually can we open this up. We can open this up. There's three units. So it gets clean there, cleaned again, and then really clean right here. So by this step. Clean, really clean, and really clean. Yeah. <laughs> so by this step. Oh, wow. You have, I mean, one, two, three, one, two, three, four. I mean, that's a lot of washing machines. Here. Now, this is all the drying section. Oh, this is drying. Yeah, so we, wa we wash over here, water gets recycled there, and then we go over here and we, we dry it. If you take a, a peek through this window, oh, yeah. you can well, actually see the clean, really clean, dry fluff. What do you do with it from here? Well, from there, now we want to compact it. So we have a, a densifier, it's a thermal densifier, and it converts this into a solid block of plastic. So when you recycle aluminum cans, you melt those into a solid block, they call it an ingot. Yeah. It's the same thing, it's just an ingot that's made from foam. After they're fluffed, they're going into this, what is this called again? An ingot machine. Ingot. Yeah. Ingot machine. All right. And it's making yeah. taffy. Yeah, it looks like taffy. Looks so we fill up this bucket with it, and then it goes over there to the press. We press it down like that. Why are we doing this again? So we're doing this so that we can transport it to a recycler efficiently. There you go. Voila. If you come over here, Yeah. we have these that they're all dry now. Oh my goodness. And that's like 40 pounds. Oh yeah. So these are a lot of trays. 1,500 trays. 1,500 trays right here down to 40 pounds. That's right. So this is going to be transported where? This is going to be transported to a recycler. Um, you'll get the picture later. I get the, so you're not going to tell me what you're saying? No, but you'll get the, you'll get the picture. I get the picture. Okay. Yeah. And then off it goes to a place to turn into a new product. That's right. Is the new product lunch trays? No. <laughs> I didn't realize I was getting into a guessing game. Is the new product something that we use? Yes. What can recycled lunch trays become? Foam cups. I don't know, little sculptures or something? This might take a while. <laughs> maybe toys, they could use them for maybe picture frames. I have no idea, I never looked into it. Uh, they could become water bottles or just containers for food. Plastic bottles. Anything and everything. Recycle, very important. <laughs> Recycle, anything and everything, you name it. Utensils, trays, anything. It'll, it'll become anything. All right, so we have the fluff, but, but this isn't the beginning of the process. The beginning of the process starts with you guys, right? That's exactly right. Yeah, all the schools out there. And that's you guys cleaning off your trays or knocking off the excess stuff in the trash cans. Yep, you want to get as much food off as you can, especially if you're in an area that doesn't have access to a wash and dry. You know, DART has a facility in Michigan and Southern California, um, but in other areas of the country, you're probably going to need to do a better job of cleaning off the trays so that somebody can take them that does not have a washing facility. And again, that goes back, it's on you guys. And you guys can do that, right? Right? Absolutely, we've seen that. it. That happened. We have seen it. And so once they come here to this facility, yes. the wash dry, then you make the, the fluff. That's correct. Which they're clean. It's really clean, really, really clean. dry, and then it goes into a machine where it gets converted into plastic in ingots. So the densifying, which is uh, important, obviously, for the transportation. and Yes. And then you take this and you make this? So yeah, the first thing the recycler does is they run it in a machine that extrudes it into little pellets like this. And once you have pellets like this, you can turn it into anything you know, that you make out of plastic. So now we're gonna give we're gonna give them the picture about what we're really what you guys are doing with a lot of this these lunch trays, right? Sounds good. Let's give them the you picture. Have Michael. The right, do you have the right frame? Uh, you know, I, I've got the right frame of mine, but I don't okay, know if good. I have the right um, actual frame. Nice. Uh huh. Very dun, nice. Dun, dun, dun. Very punny. Look at that. That's this. These are lunch trays. Those are lunch trays. You know, some other door trim. That gets oh, made molding, into, like molding yep, on baseboards, wow. rulers, rulers too. Yeah. So wow. lots of different, lots of different applications. Here's your fun fact. I just want to say that it's really good 
to recycle your trays, but if you don't, it's like really bad. And if you recycle, you could be famous just like me. And you could tell your grandkids and everything, yes, I'm the person who recycled the trays and our school became famous. Michael, this is awesome, man. Really appreciate it. Oh, thank you. Thank you for coming out. Hey, we're going to get the word out. Hopefully everyone across the country. One classroom at a time. One classroom at a time is recycling. Absolutely. Appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you, Michael. I want to thank everyone here at DART. And I especially want to thank all the students at Westwood Elementary and, of course, Mrs. Laura Rodriguez for showing us that all it takes is one teacher, one idea, and a lot of dedication to prove that you can truly make a difference in this world. And I especially want to thank you also, Ryan, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest Goes Green. Now, if there's something that you want to know about, let me hear from you. Go to curiositystquest.org, click on the Send Us on a Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be you that sends us on our next green adventure. And remember, this is our planet, and it's our responsibility to take care of it. So I wonder, have you gone green? I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. All right, you know what I've always wanted to do the whole day today? I want to take this fluff. I don't know, have you guys ever done this before? You walk up to someone and go, what? Sure! <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure! Uh oh, they're, they're mad at me. I'll clean it up! I'll clean it up! <laughs> All right, where's the broom? Yeah, I got a broom right here. Get a broom. <laughs> <laughs> Do you have something on the lens right there? Hold on, you have something on the lens? Oh, there you go.